Yeah, why was the issue when Tyler said it? Cause Tyler because Tyler got billions they of dollars. Because they just like to argue. Why don't Tyler got money? Why ain't listening to him, man? Brother got money. The point is, oh, we rolling. All right. Oh. She said, hold on. She said, I'm Come in on. the shot. What's going on? Can okay, do it with you? I'm going to do it with you. <laughs> uh, Hollywood may be on strike, but Tiana is still she's here. always here. Every day. Giving the cues. In the building with Wolf. What up, Wolf? Good. Um, welcome to another episode, but I don't know, though. We are at officially day 5,691 of this writers and actors strike. You know, and I, I've been... I've been you know, I've been grinding, Phil. You know, I finally yeah, got my you managing own. managing to find work within the drought. I finally got my OnlyFans up and running. I got like a little foot uh -oh. fetish thing. Not I think people fans. are really into it. Yeah, fans only. Is there a only. male foot fetish uh, yeah. side of the game? Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they like women it. Women in the feet? Women? Yeah. Y'all let us know. Y'all in the feet? They like them size 13s. You know what I'm saying? So let me advertise real quick. If you want to subscribe to them <laughs> <laughs> right now, <laughs> set a couple dollars, I'll take this shoe I, off. I haven't heard about that, that there's women that are into feet. I haven't. I, I think heard it, about that. I'll be honest. I think it's only men, man. It's uh, you think it's only men that. Are I think men? only uh, only men mind turning that the turn what the the, the, the licks. Oh, Hit me pass it to, the, to you. Yeah, I'll take that, please. Let okay, me, let me get take a turn. that. Take that, like Diddy used to say. <sighs> How you been, man? How was the week going? What's the uh, good word? I'm good, man. You know, shows. Yeah, yeah, it's some shows. Had some nice I ones. Had a wild one. Can you, can you talk about We won't about say it? where it was at. We won't have to say, but can you tell like the Just general story? Women, women in tiaras have been ruining comedy shows for a long time. <laughs> you see a woman in a tiara come into a show, just know that's the end of your set list if you're a comedian. <laughs> it is about to be about her birthday, her engagement, whatever she got going. Her divorce. Yeah. Whatever she got. I don't know if they wear them during their divorce. A tiara and a... I seen women with a tiara and a sash, and they come okay. in with the girls, and they don't want to hear nothing. Yeah, they don't want to hear nothing. Mm. It's like, Shut you know, up! by the end of the show, we knew how many kids she had, uh, <laughs> how many miles she had on her car. Oof. Yeah. Her ex-husband was left-handed. It Damn. was all sorts of information. Man, has, has men ever done that? Like, when we break up, <laughs> you imagine if we can't... But see, now, we do that, we end up in jail. Well, we so opposite, we don't be wanting to talk, yeah. so. But uh, did, you, did, did you want to tell the people the good news about what you found during the strike? How was your, tell them about your week, or can you, or is I can, I can, I one can of them things I, you can't announce? No, nah, I, can, I, I, I won't get specific, because they haven't, once it comes out, they'll see. But okay. one of the few things that we're allowed to do as actors during the strike is we're allowed to do commercials and voiceovers. And I managed somehow, by the grace of God, and the goodwill of somebody in casting to book a commercial with a very well-known uh, pretzel company. And I, I had a chance to be on set. I had a chance to wear some nice lederhosen. That should kind of give you a clue what it's about. I shut to the film. He was like, what are you wearing? I'm like, what they want, man. They paying the bills this <laughs> month. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, that's going to be about only fans at some point. But that was a ton of fun. It was We were there all day eating pretzels and like... They had the nerve to ask me if I wanted lunch, and I was like, no. And they're like, why not? I'm like, I got six hours worth of pretzels in my stomach. I don't want to eat nothing Yeah, that's else. the thing about commercials is sometimes you have to eat <laughs> what the, because uh, you got to do a thousand takes. That's exactly what happened. And then 10 years from now, somebody going to offer you some pretzels, and you're going to be like, <laughs> smack it out of the head. No, I do not want them. They gave, anyway, me, they gave me a bag to take home with me, and I took it like, thanks. Like, yeah. <laughs> you don't want one? Probably threw them out the window <laughs> on the way home. Like, man, It's going to be a while before I eat any pretzels. But it was a ton of fun, and I'm saying I had a hard... I didn't eat, want to eat or drink them, bro, because, you know, those things are hard to get in and out of. You understand? Yeah. Like, if you go on my Instagram, you see how tight it was, you know, and I just... To get in and out of it was not easy. So when it comes out, um, we'll share a clip on uh, YouTube or if we can or in uh, social media so you guys can see what what I do in my nine to five. And then the five to nine, you can go on my OnlyFans to see what I do. You keep talking about this on OnlyFans. People it's really coming. finna believe you. <laughs> I actually put comedy on OnlyFans. You really do? do you... One dude was like, shit was funny, bro, but I got my dick in my hand. And I was like, yo. <laughs> wrong page, wrong page. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I thought about that. I try to be open to new ideas of like, oh, well, maybe people, especially during the pandemic, of like, okay, maybe everything doesn't have to be so conventional. 
Maybe you don't get discovered through TikTok. Maybe you nope. get a hundred million hits on OnlyFans. So, but could, like my man said, work. it's cool, bro. But I got my dick in my hands. <laughs> but a few of the girls who get naked on there, they follow me back. They, so that's cool. They have FYP pages. Like people find you just by randomly going on your page. Like oh, I need a laugh. I need to take a break. My my dick is too sore. Let me take a break. <laughs> get some comedy and then go right back to work. And. I God guess they're you. they're the only entertainment that isn't on strike. <laughs> Everybody else, is. Everybody else on the picket Do they have line. a union? Porn does have a union, doesn't it? No, they don't. Actual porn, not OnlyFans. Porn does not have a union. Actual porn does. No. They gotta wear condoms. They got standards. No, no, no. That's laws. The government, the government made laws. He said, that's laws. <laughs> Hold on. Wait, wait. Let me just Hold on. Porn don't got a union. I don't know though. But I'm, I'm pretty I'm sure, pretty sure there's laws they made that say you can't be. Humping, you gotta get it like they made it so you gotta get like a STD check every year. Uh, cause that, that's what happened to Mr. Marcus. Like, he got in trouble because he was spreading the STD around Mr. him. Mr. Marcus. Yeah, he lost his job. Now he gotta change his name. He gotta go by his last name mm. now, Mr. James. <laughs> Hold on. So they have a guild. They, what? Yeah, they got a guild, bro. Like I said, listen, that's not a standardized um that they must use condoms and different stuff and STD tests. This shit ain't free. That was a law that you, you got to get... If you're going to be porn, and you you have to get checked out. That was That's why when people joke about porn stars, oh, you probably got SD. It's like, no. These are the cleanest people. <laughs> like, they get checked every day. That. So, yeah, they do. They have an adult performers actors guild. What? It's an American union for sex workers. So, yeah, bro. What's... Can you so tell me So, how the... does stand-up comedy not... I don't... <laughs> We getting fucked more than the people who actually getting fucked. <laughs> How that work? I don't think they'll... It'll take one person who's at the top to be like, we need to form a union and then refuse to perform anywhere and try to get other people involved. Like, it couldn't be somebody like you or me. It had to be somebody with a big voice like a Seinfeld or like Chappelle to be like, nah, yeah. healthcare needs to start paying them a, a livable we just wage. So all over the place as comedians, and I hate that. I do wish there was some sort of test, or I ain't gonna say a license because we all know regulation gets bad. That yeah. it's just like, okay, it's we tricky. didn't. Cops will start giving us tickets for bombing. Like <laughs> you, 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 you bomb three times in one month. We can sit out for two months and we put out we're gonna figure out what what we're gonna do with you. They put your, put wards out. You for gotta comedians. go to court. And hey, show you stole a, a joke. New, put your hands up. Get against the wall. We got a ward for your arrest. <laughs> Took Phil Hunt's joke. Going to jail. But Damn. yeah, that that's the thing that's making me want a union is seeing the the response to the whole Hassan Minaj controversy. Man, Have you seen any of this? Yeah, I did. Um, if you've been living under a rock, well-known comedian Hassan Minaj got a bunch of specials on Netflix. Has been accused of making up parts of his stand-up routine. Now we all know comedians; we do embellish. But at let's times. be clear. Okay, and this ahead. is this was my issue. Yeah, what? These aren't stand-up routines. We always have this argument. These are one-man... But this we is always... why I say to people: Go ahead, explain. This is a one-man show. So what There's Phil and I... There's a difference between a one-man show and a comedy What special. Phil and I are talking about, for those of you not know, we're saying his his this, his argument is that it's a one-man show, kind of like what Whoopi Goldberg did on Broadway back in the day. My argument is it's a stand-up special because he's telling jokes, it's televised, it's in front of people. That's not... But, but he's on saying... On Broadway... Okay, well, he didn't I, you, do a bunch of comedy clubs for it. What was it called, by the way? I'm trying to remember. I, you know, it's it's been a while but since well, I've seen I'll it. I'll pull it up here to get the official name. But when it came out, I was telling people, like, one is using that television screen, which I understand we got to, like, modernize what stand-up comedy is. Mm. But I almost felt like that was a little bit of cheating. I, yeah, I agree. And there have been a few specials I since agree. that have used the screen that I'm like, eh, if I you're agree. doing the thing, then that's a little bit of cheating, but... I agree. I mean, but the, the issue was he told a story in his in his special, and he kind of embellished it, because people, when they finally looked into it, were like, yeah, this never happened to you. You were never... Well, yeah, he, <laughs> he didn't just tell stories, and let me be clear. He, yeah. he talked about, like, experiencing racism at the height of 9-11 and how hard it is to be an Indian person, which I'll admit... I tried to listen to it of like, oh, okay. I tried to be empathetic of like, oh, okay. wow, that's crazy. But then you go, there's no Indian George Floyd. So 
Yeah. So yeah, it's a struggle. I know we're not <laughs> supposed to compare struggles, but when I watched it, that was my feel of like, okay, well, yeah, but is there an Indian Central Park Five? It never happened. Is there an Indian Emmett Till? Maybe in India. Man, and let me be clear about what I'm saying, because I'm aware that there's violence towards Absolutely. people of all sorts of other races. But what I'm saying is coming from the people that are paid to protect us, mm -hmm. meaning the cops. So when I heard him talk about all this stuff, I was a little bit like, mm. like really? <laughs> I mean, yeah. But... but then now, as they say, like, well, some of this stuff he completely made up. I'm yeah. like... Well, yeah, and to me, if it was a stand-up comedy special, which we knew, you know, insert story here, when Martin from You So Crazy was talking about his homeboy, you know, yeah. that water was glistening all over your body. We knew he made that shit up. Yeah. Like, that Oops. didn't really happen. Right. He was exaggerating, which is fair and legal in stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it needs to be a clear distinction of that's stand-up comedy. This is a one-man show. In a one-man show, traditionally speaking, you don't... I ain't gonna say you don't make up or... You don't exact... You can exaggerate, I would guess, mm -hmm. but you don't make up shit because it's supposed to be your life story. So so you're saying st what's what it would have been more of a stand up special if he told maybe less stories and just was joke, joke, yeah, punchline, you can grade joke, the joke. joke. I like this joke. I didn't like that. But when I watched Homecoming King, which is the title of, I felt like he was giving me his life story. And it's like, I would be an asshole if I booed his life story. Right. It's his life story. <laughs> what I'm going to argue, you said your dad came from India. It was very hard. I right. can't argue with that. Right. Like I we said, I'll be an asshole. We can relate. But I can grade the latest Chappelle special. And that's what's pissing me off. Everybody's conflating or mixing the two. Oh, so y'all thought when Dave Chappelle said there was a baby on the corner, that there was really a baby on the corner? It's like, stop. That was a comedy special called yeah. Killing Them Softly. Yeah, I think it would have been different if this it would have been like... This was not a one-man show. This was not on Broadway. It's like Mike Tyson did a one-man show. Charlie Sheen did a one-man show. his life. Right, right, right. He's not standing up there making up stuff. Obviously, I figured there's... Uh, I, I guess if Chappelle would have been like, you know, my little cousin so-and-so was on the corner, did X, Y, Z, went real descriptive on it, then people would have been like, well, that's, that's more like a if show. If it but... was, no. Within stand-up comedy... People are willing to accept whatever right. you present as, as fact because it's a suspended reality. It's like wrestling or something or rap even. That it's like, oh, uh, Biggie might say Frank White. That's just when I'm on my drug dealer right, shit. Right, right, right. Yeah, the feds don't indict him and then go, you said did they? Well, well who, some of these motherfuckers, they that, do. Who was it that came out and who's the nerd that went and investigated this to be like- I ain't even going to call him a nerd. I'm not going to call him a nerd but because- Hold on. Like, stop. Because, but, but this is the problem. Going to Jesse Smollett, what's the girl? Carly Russell, all these yeah. people lying. The girl who said she got hit with a brick last week. I Ooh. think the problem is that we've ma that we've made being a victim so cool that everyone wants to go on stage and be like, "Let me tell you how I'm a victim." Yeah, you know, it's not talent doesn't move the needle anymore. It's what have you been through? So Hassan Minaj, obviously the special that was Nanette before that or after the Hannah Gatsby special. That well, was it wasn't before. A special. That was before. It was a one woman show. Okay, and I, I, I agree. felt the I same agree. way about her thing where I watched it and she's talking about being assaulted and her mother not um accepting that her lifestyle that she was uh, gay, and I felt the same way after thirty minutes. I kind of turned it off because I'm like. Too many stories. I can't grade your life story. Like I'm saying, I would be an asshole to be like, that didn't happen to you. or <laughs> That wasn't funny. Or, yeah, yeah, oh. right. It's not what's funny about my mom not accepting who I am. This is my life. Huh? And that's what I'm saying. I'm not mad at regular people for conflating the two of, oh, well, what y'all thought when Cat Williams said this, that that really happened? But it's the comedians I'm seeing do it that I'm like, family. Yeah, it's... 
It's the job. One man show. And like I'm saying, you know, that was on Broadway, his show. Yeah. It wasn't like he was running this at comedy clubs. No, it wasn't. He probably so, just wrote it himself and had some writers help him sort out the details, match the video board up with the, the punchlines. Like that, I think Chelsea Handler did something like that, which confused me because I didn't know she was a stand up. And then she, you know, there was the one where she was sitting on, on the back of the horse like Putin, topless. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, this is what's selling it. But yeah, I think people don't know the difference. And like I said, I, I really get upset with the people who are comedians that, that are like, well, you know, that's the end of making stuff up. And it's like, no, stupid. The Everyone kind of understands stand-up, unless you say true story. Mm -hmm. It's all embellished. Right, it's all embellished. And that's man. the only place that making up stuff is acceptable, not in the dating realm. Like, you can't tell a girl you make millions of dollars and... <laughs> Oh, you, know, you do. Well, why don't you pay for this? Like, oh, you know, it was, I was just telling you, you know, I had it. I didn't say I was going to spend it on you. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you guys? So if you tell them it's a one man show, yeah, line it's a cool. one man show. You got to let you, you rock. come home late and your wife say, Where was you? And you go, That was a one man show. <laughs> it wasn't a stand up special. <laughs> she, no, you're going to say it was a comedy special. Yeah, yeah. She's going to say, No, this is a one man show. <laughs> so I'm going to need the truth. I need all the you details. Or else. Um, but, uh, what, what's, what's up with your girl Drew Barrymore and her so, crossing the picket line here? So there, there are rules for actors. You're in SAG, so yeah, yeah explain this. There are rules non -SAG for, member. for actors and writers on strike. When the unions go on strike, you are not allowed to do any struck work, any kind of promotion for uh, the big producers, which are like... Discovery, Warner Brothers, Paramount, Netflix, those big companies, you can only work for independent companies that are related, that are not related to those. So Drew Bramor has a show that uses uh, union writers and the okay. Writers Guild for her show. And she decided that, look, I'm going to go back to work. I'm not going to use, um, you know, we're not going to use any scripted material. It's going to be all, you know, improv or whatever she decides to write for herself. Okay. However... That's kind of considered scab scabbing because yeah. you're, you're doing the job of the people that are on strike right now and you kind of trying to do it without them. It's kind of considered scabbing. Plus, she was the one who did not do the MTV Video Music Awards in solidarity with the writers and decided, well, okay. you know, I, I think it's for her is a money thing. Her and Bill Maher were like, you know, they tried to make the argument that there are people who are also affected by the union's on strike, which is true. Oh, okay. The cameramans, the grips. Right, the grips, the, the cameramans. But aren't they on strike too? No, they're not. Okay, they're so not the, they support what we do, but, but the they're not. the writers are on strike and the actors are right. on strike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The, the, the problem is, it's like when you go back to work, it's kind of like defeating the purpose. It's undercutting what the unions are trying well, to yeah, do. yeah, that's we, why. We try to take y'all, the big people's money away. We're not trying okay. to take y'all money away. The, the people here, we're not trying to take your money. We're trying to take the big man. When you go back to work, they can still get money for sponsors. They can still get, you know, get syndicated dollars. You know what I'm saying? Which, yeah, I hate what people do because what I've been seeing people do is, well, what about Tom Hanks? And he makes 30 million a movie and Will Smith makes 30 million too. So why don't they just take their money and give it? And you go, no, think about the person that writes Will Smith's check. That's right. That's Whoever right. Mr. Miramax <laughs> is, that you wouldn't know him if he walked in the same room yeah, as you. Yeah. Whoever Mr. Paramount is, that's who we're trying to get more money yeah, we, from. We, we don't want Will Smith slap money. We, we don't want... So what, what made Drew Barrymore <laughs> say, I'm going to go out here, and she went out here with no writers? Yeah, she was going to go there with just the cameraman and just, I guess, her producers, because the producers made a deal already with, with the guild. Okay. The so they, they you know directors, they can go back But isn't that just going to be a... Bad show? It's just, it's going to be like, just, it's be like Instagram Live. Just her and the talking. camera just sitting there talking. Just, <laughs> no segments. <laughs> An audience sitting there trying to figure out why they didn't watch this on their phones. I, why I am I here? I just don't understand why, <laughs> like when the NBA went on strike. Right, 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 This right. would be like if Kevin Durant was just like, look, man, <laughs> I'm going to just go into the arena and just, just play one-on-one yeah. -on -one with my nephew <laughs> exactly. or something and, 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 like, and charge y'all to watch it or something. Something Nobody there. wants to see that, bro. Nobody want to see that. So, you know, that's kind of what's going on. So they punked on. her pretty much and made her put that away. Yeah, they were going to do it. And then I guess the backlash was was too much. But she knew she was going to get backlash. That's why I'm like, yeah. did you just want promo? Probably. I mean, I don't understand why people do that. They'd be like, you know, they'll make a decision and be like, after all the backlash, they'll be like, oh, you know, 
I need to take some time to listen and educate myself to the issues. Like, what do you mean? You knew what was going yeah, on. That's Bro, like if you just wanted bread, say, yo, I just want some money, but I understand people, man, I'll wait. You get serious with like, like regular jobs. Like, you know, my boy lives in Michigan and like, you know, GM's big in Michigan. He's like, nah. Right. If those factories close and you cross that picket line, motherfuckers will cut your brakes on yeah. your car. <laughs> and when you come out of work, you'll have to talk to GM about getting new brakes. <laughs> like, good thing you work for a car company because uh, you're going to need it. New brakes, new tires. So, yeah, I don't understand they, why I mean, she would feel like, is Bill Maher still going forward? No, nah, but now that the, the producers and uh, the writers are going back to the table, they decided to wait. Mm. And for but for me, it's it's all about money. Like that's what it is. It's not about nobody else. It's about money in your pocket. Nobody's doing something because oh, the little guys need the money. You think Bill Maher sitting there really like oh, I'm worried about my cameraman and the fact he can't pay his bill, so I'm gonna go back to work because Bill Maher is still making more than that cameraman at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Right. When they film whatever seven eight episodes, the cameraman is still not working, and Bill Maher has still collected whatever money he has from advertisers for running his show. Mm. So it's really it's really not helping anybody. So I think it's interesting. I've been seeing these billboards for I think Fiverr. Fiverr. That the billboard reads AI and something about my job. And then it says AI help me with my job. So I think it's funny that people immediately have been like, yo, fuck AI. We're never using that. Mm -hmm. Get it out of here. And that's one of the big reasons for the strike, yeah, right? Yeah, they're worried about um, companies using AI to write scripts or, like, make jokes. And uh, also to, like, do animation because, you know, they, they have these, you know, they're people who made these programs that can make these one these pictures. Mm -hmm. They actually saw, a there was a report that somebody, they tried to copyright an AI photo and they were like, you can't copyright an AI produced photo. Well, which... it made me look at it differently. Like I said, I'd have to see what those billboards actually say because it's actually kind of interesting because from afar, it looks like yeah. a guy complaining about his job being lost to AI. Yeah, and Fiverr comes but in. But then when you get you. closer, it's like AI has helped me with my job. So I think we like to think of that thing as our enemy. You know, it's like, you know, when I was a... I'll tell a short story, but... When I was a 21 year old man, okay. uh, uh, I was I was having a, a what do we call it? extracurricular activities with a young lady and um, oh, y'all playing checkers. I checked out a little early. I clocked out a little early. I was drunk, whatever. I rolled over and went to sleep, and then I heard like yum yum. <laughs> it just sound like a lawnmower. <laughs> what? See, this was back in like 2008 or so, seven, maybe six. I don't fucking know. But remember, the vibrators used to be loud. You had yeah. to like hand crank them joints. Yeah. So I was very offended. Like, what the fuck is that? What are mm -hmm. we really doing right now while I'm trying to sleep and recover? But now as an older man, I kind of look at that like, I mean, I'll start the motherfucker myself. Like... It's my friend. You want to be a part of it. it help, it's here to help me. So I'm saying we might be looking at AI wrong, that it's like, maybe we're supposed to kind of use it a Man, little bit. I see what you're saying, but I also feel like people are going to abuse it. And I think people already are. Like, you know what makes my balls itch? Pause is the, when the people do the remixes, like the... Frank Sinatra with like Homer ah. Simpson, and they put it, that's that's what worries me because I'm like, what's to stop people from doing that and then like taking it and like making a whole animation or writing a script and putting people did, out did of work? Did you see one got nominated for a Grammy? We talking about an AI song? Really? It's an AI song. It's Drake and The Weeknd, which they don't even fuck with each other. I don't think in real life no more. I gotta look that up. It, so no, listen. But this is what they were saying. They was like, well, we're not nominating the AI. We're nominating the person who told AI what to sing because we have your voice. And that's, you do. That's, that's and, and when you look at it like this, Diddy just gave all his artists back their royalties. Mm -hmm. And you go, the day, same day they announced, oh, we're going to nominate this AI for a Grammy. So you go, hold on. It looked like artists almost got their rights back. <laughs> 
<laughs> people was like, nah, we're going to start I nominating mean, this AI. Of like, we're not giving nobody their rights back, which I applaud Diddy for. I think that's a Yeah, I move. mean, after 20, 30 years, he finally gave the locks their uh, publishing. Good but job. But no, and see, look, you mentioned the locks. <laughs> I'm just, it's important to note that Diddy's been ahead. Yeah, yeah, remember yeah. Remember Diddy yeah. ripped up the locks contract and let him go to Rough Riders? I, I do remember that. That was on Hot 97. They were live and direct on the radio, and he, he they, they were yeah, talking all this. Yeah, it was like, I he called in, he was like, he told him, be careful what you sign to, because just like Kanye, they'll come down to the Breakfast Club and they'll complain about Birdman. They'll complain about Diddy or Dr. Dre and what they owe, but they'll never mention Lior or yeah. Clive, and these are the big bosses. Mm -hmm. And like Irv Gotti told him, look, I, Irv was like, I sat in the studio with you. I helped you, right? Yeah. So you can get performance fees. Irv can't never perform. Nope. So this is helping me feed my kids, your royalties. And I helped you write. So I feel the same way song. about Diddy, that it's like, Diddy put them take that, take that in your song. <laughs> he told you what to I say, money, what bro. sample to rap over. So let him have his little bit of money. And if you're going to complain, complain about the big bosses, Clive Davis, uh, mm. All these different people that are eating off you that never showed up in the studio. They never was all up in your video dancing. Nah, no, they were by the way, dancing you, in the rain. You think there's any hope for Suge Knight? You think he'll give artists they publishing rights back? No, but there is hope for. Uh, <laughs> you, you, you mentioned Suge. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel like Suge, like, look, you ain't get your publishing rights or your publishing left back, motherfucker. <laughs> you, you, you got to fight you me if you want those. Nothing back. You, you know who got, you want to talk about music, you know who got their life back? The only other BG that I acknowledge as formerly being BG myself, Baby Gangster from Cash Money is home, he's free. I, I think he's probably got some probation, but he just got out. <laughs> they, they ain't letting him go. They let him go, but they ain't letting him go. They're like, nah, we'll we'll keep a key. Yeah, but he's home after what, what, what was it, 10 years? 10, 12, I don't even know. He don't even look 12, like, but... you know, he don't even look like BG. There were some claims... That I mean, there was a clone. It was a. It was a. They cloned BG. Nobody looks like themselves <laughs> after they get out of prison. Man, my man with it. He he was skinny. He didn't have no hair. He comes out with dreadlocks, a six pack. You know, he got all his muscle. He looked like a he man. Well, action he figure. ain't been doing nothing in there but working out. Damn, and his his eyesight didn't get better either. His muscles got bigger. <laughs> <laughs> he was in there for fourteen years. Fourteen? What did he do? Yeah. Possession of a gun, which they gotta stop that. I think. Wait, wait, wait! So he got fourteen for a gun. And, hold on, I was, I wasn't finished. Oh, there's more. Okay, we were there's weird. more. There's more. Oh, what else? Possession he do? of a gun and obstruction of justice, which I'm not oh, even come on, quite man. sure what that means. But then you gotta know these guys. A lot of them are predicate felons, so you it's know. not the the last charge. It's the charge before the charge before the you, charge. You know what I think? They just find a way to keep black folks in jail longer. Like now they realize they got yeah, rid of some ridiculous. of these Rockefeller drug laws. It's what are what are black folks into now? Was was the guns? All right. Yeah. Up the up the time on the guns so that way when we catch them, we can keep them in there for I mean, longer, man. Come Wayne on. got popped for gun possession, but then he posted that people should vote for Trump. And, and, he Trump, got a, yep. and Trump cleared his charges. Yep. So I feel like Wayne got to start hooking BG up with that yeah. Trump package. Help my, my namesake brother out, man. Come but on. But you know Lil Wayne had a golden gun? Like on you lying. 64 No, I, I promise you. <laughs> lying. <laughs> look, look golden up Golden on 007? He literally had a golden gun. I don't know, though. The Hold people up. at the airport, you thought they would have just been like, and that's the thing. I don't think any rapper should go to jail for having a gun. It's like, as many rappers get shot, like, every rapper better have a gun. You have to, man. A bulletproof vest. I would... Oh, come on. Man. I would strap oh, myself with dynamite if I was a that. rapper. Now, that looks like I could plug it into my NES right now and play. I told you, he thing, literally man. had a gun that was like, someone bought and gave him that as like a gift. And he just had it, you know, in his luggage and forgot. And you got to remember, you know, in everywhere else, guns are legal. But the second you fly into New York, boom, that's illegal. And that's why every rapper goes to jail here. I mean, that's crazy. Little Wayne, who prodigy, shine, you name them, all gun possession. That your tour bus is traveling all around over the United States. Mm -hmm. And Every city you pull into, your gun is legal because it's registered. 
the whole nine, but the second you pull into New York, and I mean, obviously they just changed the laws, so we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, New York is like a no-fly zone, and like I'm saying, yeah, per they, the amount of rappers who get killed, yeah, you should yeah. be able to say, bro, I'm a fucking rapper. That's the well, most dangerous job in America. If I'm a rapper and I hear what other rappers are rapping about, especially groups like Mob Deep, Wu Tang, talking about guns, I should probably have one too. Because if you get into a beef, you got to know that they got them. Mob Deep talked about guns in all their records, even Biggie. So I mean, yeah, I'd have a, if I'm a rapper, about guns. I mean, when I mean, that's. Yeah, well, I mean, country musicians. Just yeah, they talk about guns too. Try that in a small town. Where, <laughs> yes, come on, what, what are we talking about? What's the new one? Richmond and Richmond. You know what? Should I keep be, up with the whites you, and what they're doing. I don't keep up, but I'll tell you this: we should, you know, black folks. If you don't want to get arrested for gun possession, you should just switch to folding chairs. That's the new gun for black people. <laughs> Black hats and folding chairs. Alabama, they've been acting right for the last month or so. I see. I think I told you it was that heat. Yeah, yeah. Because Carly yeah. Russell was out here seeing babies on the side of highways. Ooh. That July <laughs> Alabama it was heat. Hot. Then we got the riverboat brawl at the end. Yeah. But back back to AI because I wasn't quite. Oh, finished. you got more. But this not Fiver, Alan Iverson. So this Fiverr ad was AI took my job in big letters. Mm. And then in small letters, it says to the next level. So like oh, I said, sometimes you got to open that y'all mind. Y'all trying to be cute. Oh, real cute. The, listen, Who wrote that for you? Did it, AI write that article? It made me huh? think about it, though. The, that vibrator might be your friend. That uh, the vibrator, the vibrator is battery that's powered. That's all no I'm AI. saying. The vibrator it's might be your friend, powered vibrator. Bro. So speaking of AI, there's a plane that's missing. And that's important because the plane was in autopilot. Uh oh! You heard about this? Yeah, it was it wasn't a? Now I don't know though, cause I I read articles, but I only read the first five sentences. So you're gonna have to help me. Somebody was in danger. He eje- the the uh, the soldier ejected himself, and the plane c- plane kept flying. Is that what happened? The, like am I? Yes. Okay. See, I be sure. See, I be knowing. I be paying attention sometimes. I don't know the whole story, but I know somebody. So got, specifically, F thirty five B, which is F thirty five bomber. bomber. Yeah, my dad was Air Force. Mm-hmm. He'd be proud of me for knowing that. <laughs> you know, yeah, somebody on Sunday <laughs> ejected themselves because it looked like danger. Okay. And the plane kept going. So wait, so wait, so wait. Are we going to have another Chinese balloon situation except reverse? Somebody in China is going to see a plane just kind of hovering and then they'll <laughs> shoot it down or something? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell me where this ejection happened? In like... South Carolina. So based on the jet's last known position and in coordination with the FAA, we are focusing our attention north of Charleston around Lake Moultrie and Lake uh, Marion. That that pilot so, is losing his job. Charleston, South Carolina, mm-hmm. and Columbia. No. Yes, he is. It was on autopilot, which is what they Bruh. tell them to do. But you're losing your job. How is it? The plane didn't crash, so why did you eject? What, did the oxygen run out? Here's what I think. This is my theory. Go ahead. This plane looked kind of dark. It's black. Here we go. It, it went missing what day? <laughs> Saturday? Yes. I think it went to see Deion Sanders in Colorado. That's, <laughs> that's where all the way. That's, <laughs> that's where, where everybody that's black went on Saturday. Everybody. Did you? This is the most black people they've ever had in Colorado. I Yo, did you hear the announcer? He was like, one of them was like, oh, it's it's like a mix between football and the BET Awards. I, I mean, like, Damn, yeah, it is bro. because I was looking at the sidelines when they were playing Colorado State, and I'm like, it's mad black players on Colorado State. Yeah, but I, that imagine been- being being black and playing for Colorado State, and you look out in the crowd, and Migos is there, and Lil Wayne is there, and Wu Tang, and Tyler Perry, and everybody just there. Everybody black, and they're all rooting against, against you. you. Like, <laughs> and you like, damn, I, I grew up looking up to these motherfuckers. Man, I bought your album, man. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm black too. Damn. No, no, y'all want to wear my jersey? I'll give you a jersey. You want to wear my jersey? Nah, that's that was a good game. Uh, on the side note, that, that was, was fuck good. That was. Great game. I mean, I expected the, the the Colorado to win, but I didn't expect it to be as close the as it was. The game overtime. they played was great. And I mean, I mean, obviously, dion has been great a long time. Prime time. So it's crazy because I feel like every bit of hate that whatever Kanye is and how they like hate him, mm-hmm. Dion was that in the 90s. 
Y'all don't know how great some of y'all watching may not know like how great Dion was. He, Dion was prime time. Like Dion had a song on the radio while he was playing football and baseball. Must be the money guy. Oh, I don't yeah. dance. <laughs> yeah, he gyrated a little. Must be the money. The crazy thing that. was that he was hanging with Must Hammer and ha yeah. he inspired Pumps in the Bump. Pump, that's right. Yes, which yep. my grandmother loved. Pray by MC Hammer. She like pumps. So listen, <laughs> the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life what? is my grandmother seeing pumps in a bump. No, after not pray, grandma. After pray and being like, what in the hell is wrong with that man? My grandma didn't cuss. So she was finding like, what in the say I'm healed is wrong with that man? And saying like all these fake cuss words. Name some fake cuss words. Man, you ain't never watched Kevin Samuels? He was one of them from that generation. He oh, would be what like, what in the French toast? What in the sugar honey iced tea? You, you call down on? here, you big as a linebacker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, it's just something very funny about people trying not to cuss. Trying to make up words to not cuss. Yeah, oh. so she was disappointed. But yeah, Dion and Hammer was rolling tight. And, yeah, it must uh, be yeah, up. Go look it up. I'm, I'm telling you, Jamie Foxx's character in one any given Sunday was based on Deion Sanders. It's so crazy that people try to doubt him because it's nah, like, he's great, who man. has ever won a Super Bowl and a World Series? I, th I feel like he may be the only person. He might be because I, I, people were like, Bo Jackson, like Bo Jackson never won a Super Bowl. Right. Um, and like I said, I think he won both. I he think did, yeah. He at least played in a World Series because I remember him dumping the water on that yeah, uh, yeah. white uh, journalist's head. Remember the white journalist was like, I feel like he needs to pick one, and it's irresponsible for him to do both. Yeah. And then Dion came and won, I think, the Super Bowl and found him and dumped water on his head. That's and crazy. it was great because he had the perfect <laughs> white man reaction. He said, that's a real, you're a real class act, Dion, a real class <laughs> act. Cool off. And the shit was so yeah. funny. But yeah, it's when we say he's the only man to ever, it's like, how confident would you be if you were the only man to ever yeah, no, do no, thing, insert thing here? Nobody so, else has done it. No, You can't think of any other athlete current day that is playing their primary sport, like Kevin Durant plays basketball, and then he goes over and but now he's playing hockey. that's because... I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, but, no, no, no. That was all. But that, that's was because they stopped them from doing it. Because it wasn't like it was white boys doing it. It was no, Dion right. and Bo Jackson in the 90s. Yeah. And they were like, no more of this. There'll be no more Negroes playing two sports. So wait, they added that into the contracts in the union? Like, No, they just, in high school, they kind of tell you, yo, pick one. Remember LeBron was an all-pro tight end? Not an all-pro, but an all-state tight end. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, and then yeah, remember yeah, you yeah, got yeah, Antonio yeah. Gates, who, yeah, was, yeah. who played college basketball, didn't play football, and went on to become an all-pro tight end. So yeah, Charlie, a lot of, Ward, Charlie I mean, Ward, too. I'm like Charlie I said, Ward. Yeah, yeah so... Another great example. So, yeah, you know, their mind owes Tim McCarver. Tim McCarver, that he dumped the water. That oh, that's right, that's right. It was McCarver. You're that, a real class act, Dion. Yeah, but, but everybody was laughing and smiling. McCarver was the only one pissed off. Go back and watch the video. I know we sound old saying it. Go back and watch the video. I promise you it's Oh, we'll post it. it. Like, you yeah, know, yeah. We'll, we'll chop we'll this chop up. We'll, 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 up. we'll get it to you. Must but, be the, I can't but wait I to post that. I said that to say he's been confident and he's been doing what they thought he could not do for a long time. I'm happy for him. I'm not a fan of Colorado, but I'm happy to see Dion. I mean, killing well, it. We fans while Dion's there. Yeah. Don't say that, brother. I mean, okay, fine. I, I'm a fan of Colorado while Dion. I, I ain't never watched a Colorado football game ever until Man, Dion listen, became the coach. All facts. Dion got his son playing quarterback, and that's both the of thing. his his son playing quarterback, other son playing um, safety. Thing. Got two of his sons on yeah, the team. Yes. So come on. All right, this I'm a would fan. Be like, right. This is like Levar. Lonzo Ball and LaMelo Ball, but if LaVar coached the team. Coach Lake is right, right. So true, this is, true. we ain't never really seen nothing like this. Nah, but they, and they're and they killing it. Um, and yeah, they're and that's, killing they, it. And honestly, Colorado ain't been on TV like that. They never... They before, were 1-11 and last year. People got mad because they were like, he cut all the players, basically, and sent them into the transfer portal but, and brought a bunch of players. From the HBCU, bro, they so they weren't showing were their games on TV, and no, you know, Colorado's not mad because they're making money. They selling out. Their tickets went from two hundred dollars, whatever, last year to now. Their tickets are over four hundred dollars. Yeah, when you got they making money and, and, and Lil Wayne performing, yeah, your ticket prices go up.
That, but, it's, it's, mm. but that's what's funny to watch is like, you know, you got all these black celebrities there. Now we talking, you know, September, yeah. October. Yeah. But boy, when December hit. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't going to be out there. <laughs> yeah, we going to see you. <laughs> we going to see you from the crib, big dog. I see you doing your thing. Well, they'll they be, be, they be in a luxury suite. They ain't coming out of the field. That's, that's the thing. I hate the narratives that non-sports people, anytime non-sports people show up, it's about to be bad. Mm -hmm. The non-sports black people have showed up to be like, where was all this support when he was at Jackson State? And it's like, oh, come on. Go, go back. Hold on. Go back and look at the pictures. Snoop Dogg came to Jackson State. He did, he State, did. And this person came to Jackson State. And that person came to Jackson State. So it's just like, can you just say you don't watch sports? I just thought it was interesting. They had Lil Wayne bring uh, the Buffaloes out. And I was like, is that is that Lil Wayne? I like, he came out and did a whole song. I said, like, oh, yeah, okay. Hey, you know. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. Deion bringing them out. Like I said, we ain't, we ain't felt these types of vibes for Denver. I mean, Denver won an NBA championship, and you ain't seen this many people. No, no. Nobody. Since <laughs> Iverson and Melo. <laughs> Not that many black people. Which I know uh, <laughs> Russell Wilson and Sierra got to be like, well, where was all this shit last year? Mm -hmm. We came down here. Yeah. But look, The Rock was there. That's right. Oh, that's right. I forgot. The Rock, I forgot. Listen, this, this cracked me the up. The People's Eyebrow. The Rock was in Boulder. Ah. You see what I did there? You know, I do see what you did there. And you know how he did it, folks? It's thanks to this bag right here. When you drink and they're back, welcome back, Magic Mind. You see, this is their new... Have okay, you seen this? They got is some a new, new package. They got some in new there. packaging. Remember the last time it was just the box. Now yeah, we have this was, nice, sleek. Juice. We had juice last time. Yeah, we, we had got this... it in the bag. That's juice. Or... It's, it's in the bag, man. That's how they're selling it now by the kilo. <laughs> There's juice in there? <laughs> There's no, no. Well, so, okay. There's those little bottles that they have. You want to open it up? And take I don't want to open it up, but you can if you want to. Yeah, you You're can open closer. it up. My, right. my arms, my limbs are short. Here we go, some more short phobic jokes. Yeah, my limbs are short. You so go ahead and the, open the bag, that up. It's, it's this nice new packaging. I Shut like up. how they have it. Um, and this is great for your mind. So you come up with jokes like what Phil, Phil came up with. I think I just completely butchered this bag. Yeah, yeah, it's I okay. Don't worry about <laughs> it. You got to take happens. my word. I didn't, I didn't have my magic mind today. That's why I completely messed this bag up trying to open it. <laughs> But there's about five bottles in here, and it's it's great with your coffee. You can have it with breakfast, lunch, or dinner. Just drink it with something. I, I like to drink with my coffee, and okay. you can drink it warm or cold, and it well, helps it's you. all natural, and there's no that's true. I there's forgot no about crash. That. That's what I felt when I had the magic mind of like coffee. I can drink. I'm up for two, three hours, and then I feel that like coming down. Yeah, nah. That is because it's all natural. I never yeah. felt. You just like take I it. I was crashing. Yeah, you take it, you shake it up, and you chug it. It's these little bottles, and it's it's like an energy shot, and it's natural. There's no like, mm -hmm. it's not like how some of these other things put all the sugar in it. It's got all natural ingredients, so you could you could use our uh, our code to go get you a bag of this. They sell it on Amazon too, so there's somewhere else you can buy it. But we want you to use our code, help support the show. Uh, Go on to magicmind.com and I'll use our promo code IDK20. Uh, That's IDK20. Now, if I get that wrong, there's going to be in the lower third, <laughs> the link where you can look it up. But I'm pretty sure it's IDK20. That hasn't changed. So use that. Get 20% off thanks to Phil's bank account. I'm sorry, bro. I should have told you before we connected it. But use that and you'll save some money and go get you some Magic Mind. It's delicious. Right. I love it. We done with our promo. Yeah. Thank you, Magic Mind. I appreciate y'all. We do. Appreciate you. So we'll roll from that into, you know, we was mentioning who was on the sidelines. and uh, mm -hmm. Said The Rock was in Boulder. I Rock love it. The Rock was in Boulder. And uh, Offset was in Boulder. Did you see the latest, latest in Offset news that... You well, know. well, I have a couple things I saw about Offset. Okay. One, he had a sleepover with Kai Sinat. Which I was I love like, how like you? I'm just proper. Reaching. <laughs> Did you? Proper he didn't have his magic mind. I mean, that would be magic nose <laughs> calls, and that would be something else. Anyway, <laughs> Kai Sinet. Okay, what about? I saw that he Offset Let's had a you had he had a sleepover on, on Offset. He had a sleepover. I saw that. I thought that was weird because they they were live streaming them sleeping in the air mattress. I was like, why why are we watching this? 
That was number one. Number two. You're old. <laughs> Bro, but they, was, they, they weren't doing I nothing. I only say you're old because, like I told you a few episodes back of like, we got to open our mind. Remember we talking about Faint Famous? Yeah. And how, yo, Kai so, Sinet caused a riot. So, so I'm just saying they His show, on his live streams <clears throat> are something people are watching. Watch More the- than the, TV is on strike. I don't know if you've noticed. Oh, okay. I don't know if you've yeah, noticed. Yeah, yeah. The kids aren't really feeling TV. <laughs> so, yes, they're watching Offset they're watching have a sleepover. Sleep. All right, so it was that, and then I saw... With Kai Sinet. Yeah, I saw that, and then I saw... Uh, I guess there was some hoods from Queens that had some issue with Offset. They were calling out his name, talking about they're going to rob him, and Offset... What particular hoods from Queens? I, don't, I didn't catch the name. This was, uh, for those of you listening, if in case you live under a rock, uh, this was um, Big Zoo. Apparently, oh, which that, is that's... Nicki Minaj's husband and folks. his crew. Yeah. So him and his guys, which everybody kind of looked at the live stream and went, "Wait, aren't you forty? Are you over forty? Mm. What are you doing? <laughs> like you're beefing with a rapper. Mm. You're not even a rapper. Which I'll say is progress for rap because two women's husbands are fighting." That is pro- that's progress. It used to be baby's daddies. So now it's, it's, it's progress yeah. because it's husbands. It's husbands now involved. It's Offset, who's Cardi B's husband, and mm-hmm. it's 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 Nikki's husband. So I go, at least it's husbands. Yeah. At least we are past baby's daddies fighting or baby's mama's fighting. We are elevated We're to husbands. Forward. But you do go, but y'all are husbands and y'all are fathers. Uh Fathers shouldn't be looking for fathers. And mm-hmm. like we said, you know, Offset's a rapper, so he's busy doing appearances and flying at Sea Coach Dion. And and you're here talking about, yo, where you at, son? Where you at? We're coming for you. Where you at, son? It was just, and it's just like, it was just all that old slang. cut it out. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Feel me, dog? I'm, you know, we out here. <laughs> oh, it was funny because during the video, one of his homies is like, wait, what is that? How they DMing me, though, right now? And you could see like the, <laughs> the confusion in his face of like how, how, how you you're on this? Instagram live and don't even understand. Wait, 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 how you work this man? How you send him a message back? Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We coming for having you. Having an ass. As soon as we figure out how to do what we're doing, we we coming. You, 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 yo, one of y'all got Uber? <laughs> Let me use your account. Mine is locked up. Yellow cabs keep passing, son. And it's like, yeah, man, y'all are old. Just go home I, I thought and it was like funny. chill and raise your children. Offset responded as he was getting onto a jet. Of which, course, which I thought was the perfect response. And that's the thing of like, you can't beef yeah. with somebody who you On just a, jet. a goon, and then this dude is, you know, who he is. I'm sorry, I'm trying. You to can't, you can't slurp beef with my straw. You can't beef with somebody when you're just local. Okay, if you just getting on the train, but he's getting on a private jet, there he just goes to the other side of the country and then beefs over because you can't follow him to the. Other, you got parole. You can't my follow him to the other side of the country. Me, but and then anyway, your straws on yeah, strike. My straw said, "Nah, son." <laughs> straw wants, straw wants rights to be seen. Which, by the way, Nicki Minaj, we we gotta have a conversation. Um, how's one of your man's name? Safari and the other man is named Big Zoo. Mm. Isn't a safari just a big zoo? It is. Or is a big zoo <laughs> a safari? <laughs> Nikki mean, likes animals. That's I think that's fair to say. I'm a I'm gonna change my name to something that it's involves animals. It. Big Serengeti or some shit. Large Serengeti. Nah, it, it, and <laughs> large see if I can holler at Nikki and she'd be like, You got animals, nigga? <laughs> Now what what's what's the kid who's dancing the big big uh doo, 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 oh the big groove guy yeah big groove yeah he down with that crew too ain't he nah he's not no. named after a pet and zoo or... yeah. <laughs> safari she yeah. likes animals she yeah. likes safari she went from safari to big zoo she sure did mm. that is like a big zoo that's can that's we not what it says when can we, we look stay... up your criminal history sir it, well you know what maybe. I'll say this, Phil. Maybe this fight wouldn't have happened, or maybe this beef wouldn't happen if if uh, Jonathan was there. Yeah, if Jonathan Majors had a broke it he, up. He the broke. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan Majors, that's your job, by the way. Now. Where were you, you at? We needed you. You break up fights. 
Did you see the video? I saw the video. I don't think any of those girls knew who he was, it which felt a little staged. Oh, here we go. It? Come on. It didn't feel staged. What, what, who, what, what, who would have the kind of time? Ain't nobody working. The so camera he, angles are perfect. No, it was shaking and the video was all it's weird because everybody's got iPhone 12s. So I don't know how come easy the video was now so to tell somebody your film this. I don't, I don't understand. And shake your hand like it's not professional. I don't understand why the video was grainy because everybody got iPhone 12. All these cameras are like 4K, so I don't know why it was so grainy, but you can see him walking in and he's breaking up the fight with the girls. It's like, yo, just, let's just talk. Let's just talk. And somehow I'm watching these girls like, don't none of y'all know who that is? Like, y'all don't know. Everybody's acting like, they don't know who it is. Even if they know who it is, they still got beef. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. So he shows up, and you know, it's like, oh my God, what's he, what was he doing there, first of all? Like, was he walking? But that's why I'm saying that to is, you, that is a question. everybody pretty much wrote that off as, bro, this feels staged. And it does. I can't lie, it feels staged. It's just like... I don't know, why, but why? For what purpose? I mean, he, 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 you know, he's just to his name. try to keep his name out there and try to keep it out there in a good light because you go, I mean, it's been a lot of fights, bro. You haven't shown up to break up, but now you're what yeah. in L.A. breaking up fights. Two girls it felt like a uh, lean on me. <laughs> Kid Ray and what's his name about to fight? You got to come here, Mr. Clark. <laughs> but instead of Mr. Clark, it's Jonathan, it's Jonathan Majors. Majors. <laughs> hey, y'all, stop. Let's let's talk. Let's just talk. You imagine wanting to fight somebody? Somebody's like, let's just talk. No, 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 and no. We... Jonathan Majors, and that's why I felt stage. He always has this signature the hat. 1920s look going. Which somebody <laughs> said a long time ago that he looks like a Negro. He dresses like a Negro League baseball player. Yeah, you dress like and he... you do go, yeah. If somebody told me that was a picture of Satchel Page, I would be like, yeah, that's. That's a picture of he, Satchel Page. He just like he throw newspapers in the mornings. Yeah, he's very uh, <laughs> extra, extra. Read, read all, all about, about it. it. Very much so. Hilarious. But uh, yeah, man, I don't, I don't know. I don't think it's staged. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, you know what? Let me not say. I don't know though. Let me not say it because we did. I people did believe Jesse for a while, so they did. I'm gonna give it a couple of weeks and see if any new developments come out. Somebody like, hey, he paid me to hold the camera. He said, look, this would be good for Instagram. Listen, it is a strike. <laughs> it ain't like it ain't like he busy. <laughs> Something to do. It ain't like he busy, so, like, so yeah, it felt like he was just keeping himself out there. But if he could break up Big Zoo and Offset, that that would work out well. With speaking of which, you know, these guys who, you know, go to jail. That you know, Tyler Perry recently had something to say about that. Uh, did you catch the clip? Now, see, he's testing me because I mean, I follow. I don't follow a lot of. I follow some things. I don't follow a lot of things. But I'm gonna try to see if I get I this mean, right. I mean, we all are on the same social media, bro. Yeah, but the algorithm, the AI, changes what you see into what from what it I see. Doesn't really. We all kind of De see depend the on what same you like. So let me see if things. I get this right. Don't, don't give me give me the buzz if I get this wrong. All right. All right. All right. So Tyler Perry was doing an interview with someone, and they were talking about. Women and money. Well, you got to understand, Tyler Perry's on strike just like you are. Yes, but he's a billionaire. So you got time to do your podcast now. Yes. Hit yes. Tyler Perry up. He's got time to do your podcast now. Hey, you want to come through? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Medea ain't doing through nothing. You come through Medea. Medea goes to jail and Medea does your podcast. That's right. Um, <laughs> But yeah, Tyler Perry was with some chick. I, I can't. I'm sorry. I that's name, no offense. But, we we, we were all in the clip. You know. Tyler kind of says, "Yo, women, if your man can just pay the light bill, then he can just pay the light bill. Long as he loves you, then mm. it's cool. Whatever, whatever." <laughs> Which I mean, that's the basis of all Tyler Perry movies. If you've ever yeah had actually to watch one, yeah, women make you watch them. I, I can't remember one that I've the, ever liked. The first one, only one that I saw was Diary of a Mad Diary of a Mad Black Woman, and okay. my my girl made me go see that. I didn't want to see it because I knew it was gonna be a bunch of women in the movie theater. It wasn't gonna be no men. And Tell then, my like, girl, that's right, mm -hmm. bro. Every time I know that's happened, right. You remember the part when and when Shamar she was Moore is yeah just there. with the fake dress. It's a lot of Shamar Moore. Bro, going did you on. see it? You remember the part where she was choking the guy in the bathtub I don't and drowning him? None of that mess, man. All right, so there's a part in in uh, Diary of a Mad Black Woman where she's drowning the guy, and all the women are like, "Yeah, that's right, you drown him," and I'm like, "She's gonna murder him." Y'all cheering murder, and then 
It was like two other guys, and we just kind of looked at each other like, it's probably not a, we shouldn't say anything. <laughs> we should just learn and take time to respect their feelings and learn and listen. <laughs> Don't say nothing. Hilarious. We, we have to figure out who we are as men and support them in this. By the way, I'm going to ask, as I always do, Tiana. T! How we doing? On time. Oh, right there. You look. They got the. They got the. I know, but you don't. You came in here at seven fifteen. No, no, no. I got here before seven. We we battle. Huh? Oh man. Oh four. So oh. Let's, let's wrap this up. But uh, yeah. Just so. don't go see movies with your women about women. Go see a comedy. Don't go anyway. Yeah, that's Tyler what has said that they should focus on character. You know, the character of a man, which is much like Ayala has said a few months back. They got the whole. Ebony K. Williams thing started, which so funny. She came to a show that I was on recently. Oh, yeah? Oh. But I was like, it's good that I didn't know she was here. Oh, I no. Would've, I would have made this whole set about. Oh, no. Let, don't let's do that. talk about it. The garbage anyway, man? Oh, no. No, it was the bus driver. <laughs> bus driver? Oh, you know, don't do it. But I said that to say, yeah, Tyler Perry kind of told him, hey, y'all got to be realistic, which is the same thing that Ayala told him. Hey. Are you aware of who black people are in society and that we make less? And they're all arguing, which I find funny because all the time they constantly say, when I meet a rich man, I'll be submissive. And you go, yeah, you're arguing with Tyler Perry. He's a billionaire. He's one of the few black billionaires. What are we? Broke the money line. What are we talking about? (laughs) So, yeah, it's just funny that. They don't listen to anybody. That character, you know, they they're mad at the bus lanes. But you, would you rather have a man in bus lanes or Tory lanes? Oh, nobody <laughs> wants Tory lanes. Tory lanes don't be single. Nope. You saying that he just got married in jail? <laughs> so anyway, let's do some advice if you got. Yeah, it. We'll, we'll we'll wrap it up. We're gonna get out of here real quick. I had a really good question here. If you guys have questions you want uh, two not experts to answer. Send them into the podcast. We got a link on the page on our Spotify, and then you can also DM us, uh, DM us on our Instagram, which is I don't know though, uh, pod on Instagram. I don't know though, pod on YouTube. Please like, share, subscribe, and follow. And um, we'll we'll leave you anonymous. But again, we're not experts. We're not we're not trained. We just we just give common sense jokes answers. Um, here's a good question. I don't understand this, but I'm gonna read it. <clears throat> Should I impregnate my high school girlfriend against my wife's wishes? <laughs> Let me read that again for the people in the back. Should I impregnate? Who asked this question. <laughs> oh no, no names. Should Who's I impregnate Tyler Perry when you need? <laughs> this is a, this is a Tyler Perry movie plot. <laughs> Does he pay the light bill? Is what Tyler Perry <laughs> At would least. say. Which that's what pissed them off. They said the light bill. Yeah, that's what he can handle. That's what he can handle. You I be- said the Netflix bill. <laughs> oh damn, it is going up. <laughs> It is going up. The strike. Uh, uh-huh. Shouts out to the strike. <laughs> uh, I'm a happily married man with two awesome kids. My high school girlfriend has recently gotten in contact with me and dropped a bombshell. She confessed that, unbeknownst to me, I got her pregnant 20 years ago when we were teenagers, and my mother bribed her to have an abortion. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a real letter. I no longer have contact with my mother, but this type of controlling behavior is very characteristic of her. My ex, who is childless and unmarried now, has a lot of regrets about the abortion and requested that I father another child with her to replace the one she lost then. (laughs) I realize this is extremely unorthodox, but I feel very badly about what my mother's toxic behavior put Lisa through. I can just picture her coming to my mother to ask for help and my mother verbally berating her into submission. I asked my wife for her thoughts on the idea and she angrily shot it down and said it would be cheating. To be clear... I get that extramarital sex is literally the definition of cheating. (laughs) But this scenario is kind of different because I only be doing it to help Lisa. Can it really technically be considered cheating if it's for an altruistic reason? Uh, I'm I'm considering going ahead with it despite my wife's objections. (laughs) Uh. (laughs) Uh, Do you think I'm justified to do so or is my wife correct that this would be cheating? If I do go ahead with it, should I tell my wife I'm doing it despite her objections or just leave her out of it entirely? (laughs) I realize there's no way to make everyone happy here, but I'm just trying to do the right thing. First of all, so let me just say, 
That is cheating. If you sleep with another woman outside of your wife, dude, that's cheating. Even if it's for all the right reasons. Now, if you to say you want to donate your sperm and give it to her in a in a in a bottle, ah, see, you that's found, not cheating. You now, found a nice middle ground. The there. loophole there. Now you just artificial insemination. Right. It's just donations. But if you actually want to go behind your wife's back and don't say it's kind of cheating, it's, you can't redefine cheating, even see, if you mean artificial. Well, is the theme of this show. Today. AI. AI, baby. <laughs> artificial insemination. AI. No, I didn't ejaculate in that poor woman. I <laughs> nutted in a sock and passed it to her. There you him. go. Hold that down. Hold, Hold that, that down. There you go. Put it in a cup. There you go. Hold that down. There you go. That's for you. See, <laughs> these types of questions people ask, and that's why Tyler Perry got to come and tell us, like, here's what he is and what ain't a relationship and the character of a man. Bro, this, this is crazy. Bro, this is a plot for a Tyler Perry movie. See, this is one of them. Yeah, exactly. This is exactly what this, this is. This is a diary of a <laughs> trash black man. <laughs> God is it damn. cheating if I... Is it? I'm just trying to help uh, her. Uh, you know, if I just... I just my mother, it's my this mother's lady fault. pregnant, y'all. What would y'all think? How would y'all feel? I feel bad. If uh, who wrote this? Future? Who? <laughs> Nick Cannon? This? Who the fuck is this? It might have been Future. It might have been Nick Cannon. Yeah. Might have been either I'm just, one. She of wants them. a kid. I'm, I want to replace the one that my mother made her give up yeah, years he, ago. He made us really understand his story too. He was like, I mean. I feel guilty because I owe her a baby. Oh, you do? Yeah, you owe her. Come up you on that. The R. Kelly song, Half on a Baby. I just, how come she can't adopt? Like, that's a, that's a, why she got to have it from It's you know, from a lot fresh. of other ways to get kids, man. Yeah, you could pay you, for one. Get kids can, on the side of the highway, according that's right. to Carly. According to Carly, yeah, you, you could pick go one down up. To Alabama and just yeah, pick one up with a teddy bear. Just, there you go. Yeah, go mm -hmm. adopt. You don't got to. There's many options. I'm gonna just go with this. Look, man, you know the answer to that question. Don't, <laughs> don't write in and try to ask us and try to incriminate us in your <laughs> bullshit. Your wife come up here looking for drama, so I don't want no problem with nobody's wife. What right? if she had a baby by old? Because you know, I owe him a baby. Mm -hmm. My mama had told him to get an abortion. Gotta... No matter what her mama told you to do. Uh, 20 years ago. That was 20, 20 years, years ago. ago. And he already got kids by this woman yeah. talking about. I mean, don't I owe her? <laughs> no, motherfucker. You don't owe anybody. <laughs> Try to make Cut it, it out. <laughs> I, I like him, though. I, he I tried like, it. He but, tried it. You know, he, he's foul. He tried though. it. He, he's he tried foul. to do the right thing for See, the wrong reasons. Ladies, this is what Tyler Perry was talking about. Mm -hmm. And Ebony K, a bus driver, would never ask this question. Not this never. Is, this is a foul motherfucker. Anyway. <laughs> trying to get around. Let's go ahead and do the shout outs uh, and get out of here. Hey, so. Shows. Yes, all right. So, uh, LOL Comedy Club, um, there Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, and that's it for me for right now. I don't have anything else coming up. There's a commercial com coming out at some point. I don't know when, but follow the show page, follow the Twitter, uh, follow us on YouTube, and more information will be coming out. Uh, you got anything coming up? Uh, I'm at Westside Comedy Club. Hey, this? this is kind of important the 8th of October. That's cool. Oh, we like 8th. Uh, yeah, West. Side comedy club. A lot of good no things black people like coming east. Side. There is no east side comedy club. It's Eastville. I mean, niggas pulling up with that's, that's not different. East side comedy right, club. Fair enough. That would be different. If that would be beef. <laughs> what side? What time? What date? What time? Eight o'clock. When? I just told them the eighth. On eighth at eight o'clock. So October. get your eights and uh, find us at. I don't know though podcast. Yeah. On all social media, YouTube, whatever. Make, make sure to pull up and buy you some Magic Mind. Magic I got to drink my shots so I get my mind get right. That. See, if he had had Magic Mind, he would have never messed it up. Right down here talking about, I got a wife and a mistress on the side. Yeah, could help him. My other mistress has said a baby. that my mama had made her a board of babies. So now I owe her. Magicmind.co and a Promo code IDK20 get you 20% off, man. Thank you guys so much for joining us, man. We appreciate you. Cheers to y'all, and we'll see you next week. Bam. That's that. That was a wild ass.